Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright with Econ Course Companion, and today we're going to take a look at long-run equilibrium in mon monopolistic competition. Trying to figure out what it is and what you'll see is in the long run, monopolistic competition is going to behave very, very much like perfect competition in the sense that only normal profits will be made in the long run, and we will explain why in this video. Here we go. All right, first of all, back to the base diagram. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, these base diagrams are super helpful for you because when you know you need to show long-run equilibrium and you know that that is going to have something to do with profits or anything re related to profits in monopolistic competition or monopoly, you draw the same base diagram. What is that base diagram? It's right here. Check it. All right, we have a vertical axis of price and cost. We have zero at the origin. We have a horizontal axis with output. Boom, then we come back and we draw the downward sloping demand curve because we know that in monopolistic competition, firms are price makers. And as a result of that, they will face a downward sloping demand curve. And we know that demand always equals average revenue. Then we come back and we draw our marginal revenue curve that descends at twice the rate of our average revenue. We make sure also that it goes down below zero because you can have negative revenue um, on the margins. Okay, if you don't know the relationship between these two, take a look at some earlier videos. Then we come back and we draw our marginal cost curve, the cost curve that is most telling, the one where we find all of our answers. Its intercepts tell us the stories. Then we come back and we say, hey, what's the story? Well, this time we want to find the profit maximizing level of output or the quantity where these firms in monopolistic competition have the highest chance of making profits. All right. Then we take that point up here. We find P. We go over to that. And we are ready with our base diagram for monopolistic competition. All right. Now, in the long run, though, when we see the word competition, perfectly competitive or monopolistically competitive, that's going to be a highly, highly, highly competitive market with a lot of firms. This goes back to our basic understanding of the market structure of monopolistic competition, which is there are a lot of firms in the marketplace, but each one of them has the ability to distinguish its product from the others. The best example I can think of is I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and there were no sushi restaurants in Cleveland, Ohio when I was growing up. If I had had the understanding that that would have been successful, because it would have been, in Cleveland, Ohio, I would have opened up a sushi restaurant. But the sushi restaurant that I opened up would not be a monopoly because I wouldn't be competing in just the sushi market. I'd be competing in the going out to dinner market, right? The dining market. And as a result of that, though I could price my sushi how I wanted, so I'm no longer a price taker, what I would be was a price maker, which means I can pick the price of my best sushi rolls, but it would be in competition with other sushi, no, other restaurants, like, for example, maybe an Italian restaurant or a steakhouse or a Chinese restaurant or a Mexican restaurant or, you know, any sort of Mexican, Mexican, any sort of restaurant that would be in the area, I would be competing against them for the same people because people aren't going out to dinner twice in the same night, right? They're just going out to dinner once. Okay, so I would then, so then you can anticipate in the long run, even if in the short run I made abnormal profits, in the long run I'm going to end up with a situation where enough firms are going to enter into the business where everybody would just be earning normal profits. Okay, so take a look at the next diagram. In the long run, we would have a long-run equilibrium where all of the firms that stay in the marketplace would have perfectly normal profits, okay? Now, Jocelyn Blink, which I got these diagrams, for some reason changed this, the colors here between the two curves. So this is the marginal revenue curve, right? And in the long run, they're going to be normalized profits, normal profits, and therefore, the average cost curve for all the firms that stay in is going to be a tangential touch right there where price equals cost. They just break even and make sure that the average cost curve bottoms out right here on the marginal cost curve and then goes up. Okay, The bottom of this curve must be on the marginal cost curve. The average cost curve's lowest point is on the marginal cost curve. It touches that point right there where um, at this profit maximizing quantity, 
most firms in the long run would operate. And this would happen as a result of the fact that if a sushi restaurant came into business in Cleveland, Ohio, and I were making abnormal profits, another sushi restaurant would show up. Some person who is in the, in the industry of restaurants would see the line out the door would know that I'm raking it in. And what would they do? They would move into the marketplace and there'd be another sushi restaurant, then another sushi restaurant, then another sushi restaurant. And at some point, right, there's only so much demand for sushi. There's only so many profits to be made. And there's only so much revenue to be made. And so what would happen in the long run is all of us, if we stayed in the business, right, we would end up with normalized profits. We would not have, in other words, another way of looking at it is, you know, if originally my costs were here, where I was experiencing abnormal profits, the addition of more firms into the marketplace would take away all of those abnormal profits, and in the long run, we would have perfectly normal profits with a cost curve that looks like that, okay? So I think that's helpful. I think it kind of makes sense. I think you realize that in the short run, maybe there could be um, abnormal profits. But in the long run, when there's a highly competitive market, and that's both, as the names say, perfectly competitive and monopolistically competitive market, you are going to have normal profits. All right, my friends, I hope you found that to be helpful. That's to take a look at the long run equilibrium in firms who operate in monopolistic competition. If there's anything in there you didn't understand, go back and understand it, right? For all of these market structures, you must understand short run and the long run. You must understand the, the assumptions of each marketplace and how they operate because that dictates behavior. You must understand the profit levels. You must understand allocative and productive efficiency, which is the next video in this series. And you also must be able to compare all of the market structures back to perfect competition. Okay? So stay tuned. Watch the, remain, watch the rest of the videos in this series talking about productive and allocative efficiency and the comparison with perfect competition. And realize that the whole purpose of Econ Course Companion is that you have a companion through this two-year course of study. To help you understand this information, it will deepen your understanding of the political world around you if you understand the theory behind all economic systems. Cool, my friends. Be good out there. I hope this video was helpful. We'll talk to you in a bit.